circumstances in which this play is being performed, I would like to remind our audience that there's a divinity that shapes our ends, rough hew them how we will. As I present the tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, Is Horatio there? A piece of him. Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. What? Has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says it's but our fantasy, and will not let belief take hold of him, touching this dreaded side twice seen of us. Therefore, I have entreated him along with us to watch the minutes of this night. And if the apparition again may come, he may approve our eyes and speak to it. Tush, tush, will not appear. Sit down a while, and let us once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story. What we have tonight seen? Well, sit me down, and let us hear Bernardo speak of this. Last night of all, when yon same star that swas her from the pole had made his course to illumine that part of heaven, where now it burns, Marcellus and myself, the bell then beating one, peace. Break the off! Look how it comes again! In the same figure, like the king that's dead! Thou art a star, but Horatio speaks to it! Looks it not like the king? Mark it, Horatio! Most like! It, it harrows me with fear and, and wonder! It would be spoke to! Thou art a scholar, speak to it, Horatio! What art thou that usurpest this time of night? Together with that, that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of buried Denmark did sometimes march. By heaven, I charge thee, speak! It is offended. Speak! Speak! I charge thee, speak! See, tis dawn, and will not answer. How now, Horatio? You tremble and look pale. Is this something not more than mere fantasy? What think you on it? By my God, I might not have misbelief without the sensible and true avouch of mine own eyes. Is it not like the king, as thou art to thyself? Thus, twice before, and drunk with this dead out, hath he gone with martial stock by our watch. This bodes some strange eruption to our state. I think it may be no other but e'en so. Well may it sort that this potentious figure comes armed through our watch in the figure like the king that was and is the question of these wars. A moat it is to trouble the mind's eye. In the most high and palmy state of Rome, a little while ere the mightiest Julius fell, the grave stood tenantless, and the sheeted dead did squeak and gibber in the Roman streets, as stars with trains of fire and dews of blood Disasters in the sun, and the moist star upon whose influence Neptune's empire stands was sick almost to doomsday with the eclipse, and even the like precursor of feared events, as harbingers preceding still the fates, and prologue to the omen coming on, have heaven and earth together demonstrated 
But you are climate trees and country. But stop! Lo and behold, there it comes again! Oh, cross it, Lord, blast me! Stay! Illusion! If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me. If, if, if there be any good thing to be done, that to thee may do ease and grace to me, speak to me. If, if thou art privy to thy country's fates, which happily for knowing may avoid, I pray thee, speak! So majestical to offer to show the violence, for it is as the air invulnerable, and our vein blows malicious mockery. It was about to speak when the cock crew. It started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. It faded at the crowing after cock. But look, the morning russet mantle clad walks over yon high eastward hill. Break we our watch up, and by my advice. Let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For by my life, this spirit, dumb to us, will speak to him. Do you consent we shall acquaint with this, as needful our loves and, and fitting our duty? Let's do thy pray. For I this morning know where we shall find you most convenient. Yet of Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the memory be green, and that it us be fitted to bear our hearts in grief, and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe. Yet so far hath discretion fought with nature, that we with wiser sorrow think on him, together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress of this warlike state, have we, as twere, with a defeated joy, with an auspicious and a dropping eye, with mirth and funeral, and dirge and marriage, an equal scale of vain delight and dole, taken to wife. Nor have we herein barred your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair along. For all our thanks. And that in all things will we show our duty. We doubt of nothing. And now, Larry, what's the news of you? You have told us of some suit. What is Laertes? You cannot speak of reason to the Dane and lose your voice. <laughs> what wouldst thou have, Laertes? My tremble. Your leave and favor to return to France, from whence, though willingly, I came to Denmark to show my duty in your coronation. Yet now I must confess, that duty done, my thoughts and wishes bend again toward France, and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave by laborsome petition, and at last upon his will I sealed my hard consent. 
Take thy fair hour, Laertes. Time be thine, and thy best race is spend it at thy will. But now, my cousin and my son, Hamlet. Little more than kin, less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy nighted color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest tis common, all that lives must die passing through nature to eternity. Ay, madam, tis common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems? Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, nor windy suspiration of forced breath. No, nor the fruitful river in the eye, nor the dejected behavior of the visage, together with all the forms, moods, shapes of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. But I have within that which passes show, these but the dragons in suits of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his. And the survivor, bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. But to persevere in obstinate condolement is a course of envious stubbornness. <laughs> Tis a manly grief that shows a will most incorrect to heaven. A heart unfortified, a mind impatient, an understanding simple and unschooled. We pray you, throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as of a father. For let the world take note. You are the most immediate to our throne, and with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears his son, do I impart for you. For your intent in going back to Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire. And we beseech you, Ben, to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chiefest court here. Cousin, and our sons. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee stay with us, go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. Why, tis a loving and a fair reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. Madam, come, this gentle and unforced accord of heaven sits smiling in my heart. Come away. Appetite had grown by what it fed on. 
of my hour for me not think on it. Frailty thy neighbor's woman. A little month, or ere those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body, like Naomi, all tears. Why she, even she, oh God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. Within a month, ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her gallant eyes, she married. Oh, most wicked speed, to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, for it cannot come to good. Break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I am glad to see you well. Horatio, for I do forget myself. The same, my lord, and your poorest servant ever. <sighs> Sir, my good friend. And I'll change that name with you. And what made you from Wittenberg, Horatio? <laughs> Marcellus! My good lord. Good evening, sir. But what in faith made you from Wittenberg? Uh, a truant disposition, good my lord. <laughs> I would not hear your enemy say so, nor shall you do my ear that violence to make a truster of your own report against yourself. I know you are no truant. But what is your fair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. My lord, I, uh, I came to see your father's funeral. I prithee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it wise to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Rift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Would I had met my dearest foe in heaven, or ever I have seen that day, Horatio. My father, methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He, he was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all, I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw who? My lord, the king, your father. The king, my father? Season through adoration for a while, with an intense ear, till I may deliver upon the witnesses of these gentlemen this, this marvel to you. For God's love, let me hear! Two nights together have these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch in the dead waste and middle of the night, been thus encountered a figure like your father, armed at point exactly, a cup of pied, appears before them, and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Thrice he walked by their oppressed and fear surprised eyes, whilst they, distilled almost to, to jelly with the act of fear, stand dumb and speak back to him. This to me in dreadful secrecy in part they did, and I with them the third night kept the watch, where was delivered both in time form of the thing. Each word made good and true. The apparition comes. My lord, I knew your father. These hands are not more like. But where was this? <clears throat> My lord, at the platform where we watch. Did you not speak to it? My lord, I did, but, but answer me did not. Yet once, methought it did lift up its head and address itself to motion as if it would speak. But even then, the, the morning cock grew loud, and at the sound, it shrunk in haste away and vanished from our sight. This troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight? I am, my lord. Arm it, say you? Arm, Arm my lord. lord. From head to foot? My, my lord, lord, from, from head, head to foot. foot. Then saw you not his face? Oh, yes, my lord. What? Looked he frowningly? 
a countenance more in sorrow than in anger. Pale or red? Nay, nay, very, very pale. He fixed his eyes upon you most constantly. Ah, I would I had been there. It would have much amazed you. Very like. Stated long? Uh, as one with moderate haste might tell a hundred. No longer. No longer. 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 Not when I saw it. His beard was grizzled. No. It was as I have seen it in his life. Uh, uh sable, silver. I will watch tonight. Perchance for a walk again. I warrant it will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it. Though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray thee, you have hitherto concealed this sight. Let it be tenable in your silence still. And whatsoever else shall hap tonight, give it an understanding with no tongue. I will requite your loves. So fare you well. Upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Our duty to your honor. Your loves is mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit? In arms? All is not well. I doubt some foul play. What a night we're come! Till then, sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth o'erwhelm them to men's eyes. <laughs> Reserve thy judgment. 
be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Costly, thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressive and fancy, rich, not gaudy. For the apparel oft proclaims the man, and they in France, of the best rank and station of our, are of the most select and generous chief in that. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husband dreams. This above all, thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell. My blessing season is you. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. How many best you go, your servants do. Farewell, Elder. And remember well what I have said to you. It is in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given much private time to you, and that you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous. Be so, as so tis put on me, and that in way of caution. I must tell you, you do not so clearly understand yourself, as it behooves my daughter in your honor. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my lord, a... Of late made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? Uh, you speak like a green girl, and sit in such perilous circumstance. And do you believe his tenders, as you call them? I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Mary, I will you. Think yourself a baby, for having taken these tenders for true pay, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly, or not to crack the window of the poor phrase running it thus, you'll tender me a fool. My lord! Yet they portrayed me with love in honorable fashion. I fashion you may call it. Go to, go to. And give a countenance to his speech, my lord, with almost all the holy vows of heaven. I spring just to catch woodcocks. I do know how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows, Ophelia. If you do not believe his vows, for they are mere implor for they are brokers, not of that dye which their investments show, but mere implorers of unholy suits, breathing like pious and sanctified gods, the better to be God. This is for all. I will not, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give word or talk with the Lord Hamlet. See to it, I charge you. Come your ways. I shall obey, my lord. Shrewdly, he's very cold. It is a nipping and eager air. What hour now? I think it lacks of twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed, I heard it not. It then draws near the season, wherein the spirit held his wants for law. What does this mean, my lord? The king doth wake tonight and takes his rouse. Keeps wassail and swaggering upspring with reels. And as, he, and as he drains his draughts of reddish down, the kettle drum and trumpet thus bray out the triumph of his pledge. Is it a custom? Aye, merry is it. But to my mind, though I am native here and to the manner born, it is a custom more honored in the breach than the observance. This heavy headed rebel east and west 
makes us traduce in tax of other nations. They club us drunkards, and with swinish phrase, soil our addition. And indeed, it takes from our achievements, though performed at high height, the very pith and marrow of our attribute. Look, look, my boy, it comes! Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Be thou spirit of health or goblin damned. Bring with thee airs from heaven or glass from hell. Be thy intents wicked or charitable. Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, King, Father, Royal Dane. Oh, answer me. Say, what is this? Wherefore, what should we do? It, it, it beckons to you, as if it's some imparted to you alone, it did desire. Look at what courteous action you wage your tremor most round. I do not owe it yet. You do not, my lord. It will not speak. And I will follow it. Do not go, my lord. Why? What should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee. And as for my soul, what can it do to that? Being a thing immortal as itself, it waves me still. I'll follow it. What if it take you toward the flood, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff, and draw you into madness? Think of it. It waves me still. Go on, I'll follow thee. You shall not follow, my lord. Hold off your hands! These rules, you shall not go! My fate cries out, unhand me, gentlemen! Yeah! By heaven! I'll make a ghost of him that lets me! Go on, I'll follow thee! I say, away! He waxes desperate with imagination. To what issue will this come? Something's rot in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it. Nay, let's follow him. serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak, I am bound to hear. So art thou to revenge when thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit. Doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast and fires, till the foul crimes done and my days of nature are burnt and purged away. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars a start from their spheres, thy knotted and combined locks to part, and each particular hair to stand an end, like quills upon the fretful porpentine. But this eternal blazon cannot be to ears of flesh and blood. Live, list, or is. If thou didst ere thy father love, O oh God! Revenge is foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most foul as in the best it is. But this most foul, strange and unnatural. Haste me to know it that I, 
with wings as swift as meditation, or the thoughts of love may sweep to my revenge. Now, Hamlet, hear. Tis given out that sleeping in my orchard a serpent stung me. So the whole year of Denmark is by a forged process of my death rankly abused. But know, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's crown now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul. My uncle. <laughs> that incestuous, that adulterate beast with witchcraft of his wits, with traitorous gifts. Oh, wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce one to his shameless lust, the will of my most esteeming virtuous queen. But so, methinks I sent the morning air, brief let me be. Sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour thy uncle stole with juice of cursed heaven and of isle. And in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment, whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man, that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body. So did it mine, and with a sudden vigor it doth posset and curd the thin and wholesome blood like eager droppings into milk. So did it mine, and a most instant terror barked about, most laser-like with vile and loathsome crust all my smooth body. Thus was I, Sleeping by a brother's hand, of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched. Cut off, even in the blossoms of my sin. Unhouseled, disappointed, unannealed, no reckoning made, but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible, oh, horrible, most horrible. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch of incest and damned incest. But howsoever thou pursuest this act, take not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother off. Leave her to heaven, to those thorns that are in her bosom lodged. Frick and sting. Have thee well with blood. The glowworm shows the matin to be near and begins to pair his uneffectual fire. Adieu. <laughs> Adieu. <laughs> Adieu. Remember me.
That one, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. So, uncle, there you are. Now to my word. It is. Adieu. Adieu. Remember. I have sworn it. My lord. My lord! My lord Hamlet! Heavens secure him! So be it. What news, my lord? Oh, wonderful. Good, my lord, tell it. No, you will reveal it. By heaven, not, not I, my lord. Why, my lord? How say you then? What heart of man once think it? But you'll be secret? Oh, yes. There's never a villain dwelling in all Denmark. But he's an errant knave. There, there needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. Why, well, right. You are in the right. And so, without more circumstance at all, I will fit me shake hands and part. You, as your business and desire, shall point you. For every man hath business and desire, such as it is. And for my own poor part, I will go pray. These are but wild and whirling words, my lord. I am sorry they offend you. Heartily. Yes, faith, heartily. There's no offense, my lord. Yes, my St. Patrick, but there is Horatio. And much offense, too. Touching this vision here. It is an honest ghost. That let me tell you. For your desire to know what is between us, or master it as you may. And now, friends, as you are friends, scholars, and soldiers, give me one poor request. What is it, my lord? Never make known what you have seen tonight. Uh, we will. We will not, my lord. Nay, but swear it in faith. My lord, not I. Upon my sword. We have sworn it, my lord. Already. Indeed. Upon my sword. Indeed. Swear. Ha ha, boy. Sayest thou so? Art thou there, Trepenny? Come on. You hear this fellow in the cellarage. Consent to swear. Compose the oath, my lord. Never to speak of this that you have seen. Swear by my sword. Swear. Pika to pique. And we'll shift our ground. Come hither, gentlemen. And lay your hands again upon my sword. Swear by my sword never to speak of this you have heard. Swear by his sword. Well said, old Maul. Can't work in the earth so fast. Once more, room, good friends. Oh, day and night. This is wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven. Heaven and earth, Horatio, that are dreamt of in your philosophy. But come, here as before, never so help you mercy. How strange or odd so e'er I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think me to put an antic disposition on, that you, at such time seeing me, never shall with arms encumbered thus, or with this head shake, or by pronouncing of some doubtful phrase as, well, well, we know, or yeah, we couldn't if we would, or such an ambiguous giving out to note that you know aught of me. This do swear. So grace and mercy at your most need help you. Swear. Rest, rest, perturbed spirit. So, gentlemen, I do commend me to you. And what so poor a man as Hamlet is may do to express his love and friending, God willing, shall not lack. Let us go in together and steal your fingers on your lips, I pray. The time
time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite! That ever I was born to set it right. Nay, come, let's go together.
willing, sir. Moreover, that we much did long to see you. The need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation, so call it. Sith, nor the exterior nor the inward man resembles that it was. What it should be more than his father's death that hath put him so much from the understanding of himself, I cannot dream of. I entreat you both, that being of so young days brought up with him, and sith so neighbor to his youth and behavior, that you vouchsafe your rest here in our court, some little time, so by your companies to draw him on to pleasures, and to gather so much as from occasion you may glean, whether aught to us or known afflicts him thus, that open lies within our remedy. Good gentlemen, he hath much talked of you, and sure I am two men there is not living to whom he more adheres. If it will please you to show us so much gentry and good will as to expend your time with us a while, for the supply and profit of our hopes, your visitation shall receive such thanks as fits a king's remembrance. Both of your majesty's might, by the sovereign power you have of us, put your dread pleasures more into command than to entreaty. But we both obey, and here give up ourselves in the full bent to lay our service freely at your feet to be commanded. Thanks, Rosencrantz and gentle Guildenstern. Thanks. Guildenstern and gentle Rosencrantz, and I beseech you instantly to visit my too much changed son. Go with some of you and bring these gentlemen where Hamlet is. Heavens make our presence and our practices pleasant and helpful to them. Aye, amen. I assure my good liege, I hold my duty as I hold my soul, both to God and to my gracious king. And I do believe, or else this brain of mine hath not the trail of policy so sure as it hath used to do, that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. Mm -hmm. That do I long to hear. He tells me, my dear Gertrude, he hath found the head and source of all your son's distemper. Doubt it is no other but the main. His father's death and our or hasty marriage. Well, we shall sift him. My liege and madam, <coughs> to expostulate what majesty should be, what duty is, why day is day, night, night, and time is time, uh, were to waste nothing but day, night, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit and tediousness, but the limbs and outward flourishes, I shall be brief. Your noble son is mad. A mad I call I it, for to define it, true madness. What is it? But to be nothing else but mad. But let that go. More matter with less art. Madam, I swear, I use no art at all. That he's mad, tis true. Tis true, tis pity, and in pity tis, tis true. Foolish figure, but farewell it, for I will use no harm. Matt, let us grant him then. Now it remains for us to find the cause of this effect, or rather, <laughs> the cause of this defect. For this effect, defective comes by cause, and thus it remains, and the remainder thus. Never doubt I love Ophelia, 
I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best, oh, most best, believe it, do thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this machine is to him, Hamlet. This in obedience hath my daughter shown me. Moreover, hath his solicitings, as they fell out by means, by time, by place, all given to my view. But how hath she received his love? What do you think of me? As of a man, faithful and honorable. I would fain prove so. But what might you think when I've seen this hot love on the wing? As I perceived it, I must tell you that before my daughter told me. What might you think? Or my dear majesty or queen here think? Had I played the, the desk or the table book or given my heart a winking mute and dove, what might you think? No! I went round to work, and my young mistress thus I did bespeak. Lord Hamlet is a prince. Out of thy star this must not be. Then I prescriptive her that she should lock himself from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens, which done she took the fruits of my advice, and he a short tale to make fell into a sadness. thence into a likeness, and by this declension into the madness wherein now he raves up, and all we mourn for. Do you think tis this? It may be very like. For everything a time, when I positively said tis so, and it proved of what? Not that I know. How may we try it further? You know, sometimes he walks four hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time, I will loose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind an heiress, then. Mark me and count. If he love her not, nor be not from his reason fallen thereon, let me be no assistant to a state, but keep a farm and the carters. We will try it. Right. But look where sadly the poor wretch comes reading. Wait, you might beseech you both away. For and presently, give me leave. How does my good lord him? Well, God have mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Excellent, well, you are a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord? I, sir, to be honest, as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of 10,000. It's very true, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots in a dead dog, being a good kissing carrion, have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Hmm. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception is a blessing. But as your daughter may conceive, friend, look to it. What make you by that still harping on my daughter? And yet he knew me not at first. He said I was a fishmonger, his far con. Truly, in my youth, I suffered much extremity for love. Very near this. Speak to him again. What do you read, my lord? Words. Words? Words. What is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean the matter that you read, my lord. Slanders, sir. For the satirical rogue says here that old men have gray beards. Their faces are wrinkled. Their eyes purge in thick amber and plum tree gum, but they have a plentiful lack of wit, together with most weak hands. Oh. Always, sir, though I most powerfully and potently believe, I hold it not honesty to have it thus set down. For yourself, sir, shall grow old as I am, if, like a crab, you could go back. Madness, yet there is method in it. We 
walk out of the air, my lord. Into my grave? He comes out of the air. I'll pray that these replies are for happiness, which reason and sanity can also prosperously be delivered of. I will leave you now. And suddenly contrive the means of meeting between him and my daughter. My lord, I will take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything which I will more willingly part with all. Now, <laughs> Except my wife. <laughs> Except my wife. Except my wife. Fare you well, my lord. These tedious old fools. You go to seek the Lord in heaven. There he is. God save you, sir. My honored lord! My excellent good friends! How dost thou kill him, sir? Ah, Rosen Grant! Ah, good lads! How do you both? As the indifferent children of the earth. Happy in that we are not over happy. On fortune's cap, we are not the very button. Mm -hmm. Nor the soles of her shoe. Neither, my lord. Then you live about her waist, or in the middle of her favors. Faith, her private waist. <laughs> the secret wants of fortune. Oh, most true. She is a strumpet. <laughs> what news? Not my lord, but that the world's grown on us. And his doomsday here. But your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. What have you, my good friend, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Prison, my lord? Denmark's a prison. We think not so, my lord. Why then, tis none to you. For there is nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To me, it is a prison. Why, then, it is your ambition that makes it one. Tis too narrow for your mind. Oh, God! I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself king of infinite space. Were it not, I have bad dreams. Will, will wait, wait upon you. No such magic. I will not sort you with the rest of my servants. For to speak to you like an honest man, I am most dreadfully attended. But in the beaten way of friendship, what may do in Elsinore? To visit you, my lord, no other occasion. Were you not sent for? Is it your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come, come, deal justly with me. Come, come. Nay, speak! What should we say, my lord? Anything but to the purpose! You were sent for, and there is a kind of confession in your looks which your modesties have not cracked enough to color. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. To what end, my lord? That you must teach me. But let me conjure you by the rights of our fellowship by the consonancy of our youth, by the obligation of our ever-preserved love, and by what more dear a better proposer could charge you with all, be even and direct with me whether you were sent for or no. What say you? Nay, then I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off. My lord, we were sent for. I will tell you what. So shall my anticipation prevent your discovery and your secrecy to the king and queen molt no further. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, foregone all custom of exercises. And indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly fray of the earth seems to me a sterile promontory. What a piece of work is man! How noble in reason! How infinite in faculties! <laughs> in form and moving, how express and admirable! In action, how like an angel! In apprehension, how like a god! The beauty of the world! The paragon of animals! And yet, to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man's a 
invites not me. No, nor woman neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. My lord, there is no such stuff in my thoughts. Why did you laugh then when I said, man delights not me? To think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what let an entertainment the players shall receive from you? We covered them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer you service. He that plays the king shall be welcome. His majesty shall have tribute of me. What players are they? Even those you were wont to take such delight in, the tragedians of the city. How chances that they travel? Their residence, both in reputation and profit, was better both ways. Splut. There is something in this more than natural, if philosophy could find it out. You are welcome to Alcinar. Your hands, come then. You are welcome. But my uncle father and aunt mother are deceived. In what, my dear lord? I am but mad, north and northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. My lord, I have news to tell you. My lord, I have news to tell you. When Drosius was an actor in Rome, the players are come hither, my lord. Buzz, buzz. Oh, my honor. Then came each actor on his ass. The best players, the best actors in the world for comedy, tragedy, history, pastoral, uh, pastoral, comical, comical, historical, tragical, historical, tragical, comical, historical, pastoral, uh, scene individable, poem unlimited. Seneca cannot be too heavy, nor Plautus too light. For the law of writ and the liberty, these are the only men. Ah, you are welcome, masters, welcome all. Oh, my old friend, come, give us a taste of your quality. Come, a passionate speech. What speech, my lord? I heard thee speak me a speech once, but it was never performed, or if it was not but once. Was Aeneas's tale to Dido, and thereabouts of it, especially when he speaks of Priam's slaughter. If you live in your memory, you get at this line. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, uh, anon. Uh, anon. Finds it. Striking too short at Greece. His antique sword, rebellious to his arm, lies where it falls, repugnant to Unequal matched, Pyrrhus at Priam drives, in rage strikes wide, and with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. It shall to the barbers with your beard. Prithee, say on, he's for a jig or a tail of Baudry, or he sleeps. Say on, come to Hecuba. But who, ah, woe, had seen the Mogulid Queen? The Mogulid Queen? Oh, that's good. Mogulid Queen is good. <clears throat> Run up and down, threatening the flames with besaw broom, a clout upon that head where. upon that head where late the diadem stood, and for a robe about her blank and all or timid loins. A blanket in the alarm of fear upon. Who this had seen, with tongue in venom steeped, against fortune's state would treason have pronounced. But if the gods themselves could seer that oath, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport in mincing with his sword her husband's limbs, the instant burst of clamor that she made, unless things mortal move them not at all, would have made milk the burning eyes of heaven, and, and passion in the god. <laughs> oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, a dream of passion, 
but force his soul so to his own conceit that from its working all his visage waned. Tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice and his whole form suiting to his conceit. And all for nothing, for Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him? Or he to her, he should weep for her. What would he do? Had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? Am I a coward? Oh, vengeance! Why, this is most brave, that I, the son of a dear father, murder, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must, like a whore, unpack my heart with words and fall on cursing like a very trap.
grating so harshly all his days of quiet, with turbulent and dangerous lunacy. He does confess he feels himself distracted, but from what cause he will by no means speak. Nor do we find him forward to be sounded, but with a crafty madness keeps aloof when we would bring him on to some confession of his true state. Did he receive you well? Most like a gentleman, but with much forcing of his disposition. Niggard of question, but of our demands most free in his reply. Did you assay him to any pastime? Madam, it so fell out that certain players we overwrought on the way. Of these we did tell him, and it did seem in him a kind of joy to hear of it. They are here about the court, and, as I think, have already ordered this night to play before him. Tis most true, and he entreated me to beseech your majesties to hear and see the matter. With all my heart, and it doth much content me to hear him so inclined. Good gentlemen, give him a further edge, and drive his purpose into these delights. We shall, my lord. Sweet Gertrude, leave us two, for we have closely sent for Hamlet hither, that he, as twere by accident, may hear a friend of Philia. Her father and myself, lawful espials, will so bestow ourselves that seeing, unseen, we may have their encounter frankly judge, and gather by him as he is behaved, if be the affliction of his love, or know that thus he suffers for it. I shall obey you. And for your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope your virtues will bring you to his wonted way again. To both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. Ophelia, what you do? Gracious, so please, if you will restore ourselves. Read on this book, that show of such an exercise may color your loneliness. We are off to blame in this, it is too much proved. But with devotion's visage and pious action, we do shoot over the devil himself. Oh, tis too true. How smart a lash that speech doth give my conscience. The harlot's cheek, beautified with plastering art, is not more ugly to the thing that helps it than is my deed to my most painted worth. Oh, heavy burden. I hear it coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. To be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep, no more. And by sleep to say, we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. To sleep. Perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love? insolence of office, the law's delay, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his own quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would Fardos bear? To grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death 
that undiscovered country, from whose bourne no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us bear those ills we have and fly to others we know not of. Thus does conscience make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution sickly it o'er with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pitch and moment with this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you know, the fair Ophelia, nymph, my orisons be all my sins remembered. Good, my lord. How does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long and long to re-deliver. I pray you, now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My honored lord, you, you know right well you did. Take these again, for to the noble mind which gives wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Marriage! Those that are married already 
soldiers, scholars, eye tongue swords, expectancy and throes of the fair estate, the glass of fashion and the mold of form, the observed of all observers. Quite, quite down! And I, the lady's most dejected and wretched, that sucked the honey of his music vows, now see that noble and most sovereign reason like sweet bells jangled out of time in the heart, that unmatched form and stature of lone youth blasted with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me to see what I have seen. See what I have seen. Love, his affections do not that way tend, nor what he spake. Though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul, o'er which his melancholy sits on through. And I do doubt the hatch and the disclose will be some danger, which, for to prevent, I have in quick determination thus set it down. He shall with speed to England with the demand of our neglected tribute. What think you want? I shall do well. But yet do I believe that the origin and commencement of this grief sprang from neglected love. No, King Lear. You don't need to tell us what the Lord Hamlet said. We heard it all. My lord, do as you please. But if you hold it fit, after the play, let his queen mother all alone entreat him to show his grief. Let her be round with him. And I'll be, if it so please you, in the ear of all their conference. If she find him out, if she not find him out, send him to England, or wherever your wisdom best shall be. It shall be so. Madness and great ones must not unwatched go. Speak no more than is set down for them. Go make you ready. And now, my lord, will the king hear this piece of work? And the queen, too, in that prison. But the players make haste. Will you two help hasten them? Aye, my lord. What's ho, Horatio? Here, sweet lord. At your service. Horatio, thou art even as just a man as e'er my conversation coped with all. Oh, my dear lord. Nay, do not think I flatter. There is a play tonight before the king. One scene of it comes near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. I prithee, when thou seest the act of foot, even with the very comment of thy soul, observe my uncle. His occulted guilt does not itself unkennel in one speech. It is a damned ghost that we have seen, and my imaginations are as foul as folk and stilly. Give him heedful note, for I mine eyes will rivet to his face. And after we will both our judgments join in censure of his seeming. Well, my lord, if he steal off while this play is playing and escape detecting, I will be avenged. Hamlet, 
excellent in faith, of the chameleon's dish. I eat the air, promise crammed. You cannot feed Capon, so. I have nothing with this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, nor mine now. Be the players ready. Ah, my lord, they stay upon your patience. Come hither, my dear Hamlet, sit by me. No, good mother. Here's metal more attractive. <laughs> to you, Lord Ben. Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I mean my head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. Do you think I meant country matters? I think nothing, my lord. That's a pretty thought to lie between maid's legs. What is my lord? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> You are Mary, my lord. Who? I? I, my lord. Oh, God, you're only jig maker. For look at you, how cheerfully my mother looks. And my father died within his two hours. Nay, it is twice two months, my lord. So long. Nay, then let the devil wear black, for I'll have a suit of sables. Oh, heavens. Died two months ago, and not forgotten yet. Then there's hope a great man's memory may outlive his life. Happen you. Of thrift, but 
shed none of love. A second time I kill my husband dead, and a second husband kisses me in bed. I do believe you think what now you speak, but what we do determine oft we break. Purpose is but the slave to memory, a violent birth but poor validity, which now the fruit unripe hangs from the tree, but falls unshaken when they mellow be. But orderly to end where I begun, our wills and fates do so contrary run, that our devices still are overthrown, our thoughts are ours, the ends none of their own. So think you will no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Nor earth to give me food, nor heaven light, sport and repose luck for me day and night, to desperation turn my trust and hope, and anchors cheer and prison be my scope. Each opposite that blanks the face of joy meet what I would have well and it destroy. Both here and hence pursue me lasting strife, if once a widow, ever I be wife. If she should break it now. <laughs> Tis deeply sworn. Sweet, leave me here a while. My spirits grow dull and fain I would beguile the tedious day with sleep. Sleep rock thy brain, and never come this chance between us twain. Madam, how like you the play? The lady doth protest too much, Mooks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offense in it? No, no, they do but jest. Poison in jest. No offense in the world. What do you call the play? The mousetrap. This is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. You are as good as a chorus, my lord. Thoughts black, hands apt, drugs fit, time agreeing, confederate seas and ills no preacher seeing, thou mixture. Midnight weed collected with Hecate's ban thrice blasted, thrice in death. Thy natural magic and dire properties on wholesome life is so immediately. <laughs>
such answer as I can make, you shall command, or rather, as you say, my mother. Therefore, no longer to the matter. My mother, you say? She desires to speak with you in her closet ere you go to bed. We shall obey, were she ten times our mother. <laughs> Have you any further trade with us? My lord, you once did love me. And do still by these pickers and stealers. Good my lord, what is your cause of distemper? You do surely bar the door upon your own liberty if you deny your griefs to your friend. Sir, I lack advancement. How can that be when you have the voice of the king of Denmark himself? I sir, but while the grass grows, well, the proverb is something musty. Oh, the recorders! Come, let me see one. To withdraw with you, why do you go about to recover the wind of me, as if you would drive me into a toil? My lord, if my duty be too bold, my love is too unmannerly. I do not well understand that. Will you play upon this pipe? My lord, I cannot. I pray you. Believe me, I cannot. I beseech you. I know no touch of it, my lord. It is as easy as lying. Govern these vintages with your finger and thumb. Give it breath with your mouth, and it will discourse most eloquent music.
expedition will forthwith dispatch, and he to England shall along with you. The terms of our estate may not endure hazard, so near us as doth hourly grow out of his brows. We will ourselves provide. Most holy and religious spirit is to keep those many, many bodies safe that live and feed upon your majesty. Arm you, I pray you, to this speedy voyage, for we will fetters put about this sphere, which now goes too free-footed. We will hist us. My lord, explain to his mother's closet. A warrant shall tax him home. Thanks, dear my lord. Oh! My offense is rain. It smells to heaven. It hath the primal eldest curse of pomp, of brothers, murder. Pray, can I not? Though inclination be as sharp as will, my stronger guilt defeats my strong intent. And like a man to double business bound, I stand and pause. For I shall first begin, then both neglect. What if this cursed hand were thicker than itself in brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? Where to serves mercy but to confront the visage of offense? And what's in prayer but this twofold force? To be forestalled ere we come to fall. Or pardon being down. <laughs> then I'll look up. My fault is past. <laughs> but, oh, what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me. My foul word. That cannot be, for I am so possessed of those effects for which I did the murder, my crown, my own ambition, and my queen. May one be pardoned and attain the offense. In the corrupting currents of this world, offenses guilt in hand may shove by justice. And oft to seen, the wicked prize itself buys out the law. Is not so above. There is no shuffling. There the action lies in his true nature. And we ourselves, compelled even to the teeth and forehead of our faults, what then? What rest? Drive what repentance can. What can it not? Yet what can? When one cannot repent. <laughs> oh, wretched state! Oh, bosom black as death! Oh, live soul that struggling to be free are more engaged. of steel, be soft as sinners of the newborn faith. <laughs> All may be well.
goes to heaven. And so am I revenged? That would be scared. A villain kills my father. And for that, I, his sole son, do this same vi do this same villain send to heaven. Why this is higher in salary, not revenge. He took my father grossly, full of bread, with all his crimes broad blown as flush as may. And how his audit stands. Who knows, save heaven. But in our circumstance and course of thought, is heavy with him. And am I then revenge to take him in the purging of his soul when he is fit and seasoned for passage? No. Up sword. And no thou a more horrid head.
bloody deed. Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. As kill a king? Aye, lady, it was my word. Thou wretched, brash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Leave ring of your hands. Peace. Sit you down, and let me ring your heart. What have, what have I done, that thou darest wag thy tongue in noise so rude against me? Such an act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty. I mean, what act that roars so loud and thunders in the index? Conceit in weakest body, strongest works. Speak to her, Hamlet. How is it with you, lady? <sighs> Alas, how is it with you? That you do bend your iron vacancy, and with the incorporal air do hold discourse. Force at your eyes, your spirits wildly peep, and as the sleeping soldiers in the alarm, your bedded hair like life in excrements. Start up and stand an end. Gentle sun upon the heat and flame of thy distemper sprinkle cool patience. Whereon do you look? On him, on him. Look you how pale he glares. His form and cause conjoined, preaching to stones would make them capable. Do not look upon me, lest with this piteous action you convert my stern effects. And what I have to do will want true color. Tears, perchance, for blood. To whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all. Yet all that is, I see. Nor did you nothing hear? Nothing. Nothing but ourselves. Why, look you there. Look how he goes away. My father, in his habits as he lived. Look, look where he goes, even now, out of the portal. The 
resist the very coinage of your brains. This bodiless creation, ecstasy is very cunning in it. Ecstasy? My pulse as yours doth temperately hear time, and makes as healthful music. It is not madness I have uttered. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what's past. Avoid what is to come. And do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. Bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. For this same Lord I do repent. But heaven hath pleased to punish me with this, and this with me, that I must be their scourge and minister. I will bestow him, and will answer well the death I gave him. Mother, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. This bad begins, and worse remains behind. What shall I do? I must to England. You know that. Luck, I forgot. Tis so concluded on. There's letter sealed. My two schoolfellows, who I will trust as I will adders faint. They bear the mandate. They must sweep my way and marshal me to knavery. I'll lug the guts into the neighbor room. Mother, good night indeed. This counselor is now most still, most secret, and most brave. Who was in life? A foolish prating knave. Ugh. Come, sir, to draw toward an end with you. Father, good night. Found heaps, you must translate. Tis fit we understand them. Where's your son? <laughs> Bestow this place on us a little while. What? Oh, my oh Lord, what have I seen tonight? What? Gertrude, how does Hamlet? <laughs> Mad is the sea and wind would both contend which is the mightier. In his lawless fit. Behind the heiress, hearing something stir, whips out his rapier, cries, A rat! A rat! And in oh. this lawless apprehension, kills the unseen good old man. Oh, heavy deed. It had been so with us, had we been there. His liberty is full of threats to all. To you yourself, to us, to everyone. Alas, how shall this bloody deed be answered? It will be laid to us, whose providence should have kept short, restrained, and yet upon this mad young man. But so much was our thought. We would not understand what was most fit, but like the owner of a foul disease, to 
keep it from divulging, let it feed even on the pith of life. Where is he gone? To draw apart the body he hath killed, or whom his madness like so poor that shows itself among a mineral of metal's base, shows itself pure. He weeps for what is done. O oh, Gertrude, come away. The sun no sooner shall the mountains touch, but we will ship him hence, and this vile deed. We must, with all our majesty and skill, both countenance and excuse. Ho, oh, Guildenstern! Friends both, go join you with some further aid. Hamlet in madness hath Polonius slain, and out of his mother's closet hath he dragged him. Go, seek him, speak fair, and bring the body into the chapel. I pray you, hasten this. Come away, Gertrude. We'll call up our wisest friends, and, both, and let them know both what we mean to do, and of what's untimely done. Oh, come away. My soul is full of discord and dismay. Man and wife is one flesh. 
And so, my mother. Gus Greenwood! Fall at first. Panted in speed of war, delay not, I'll have him hence tonight. Away, for everything is sealed and done that else lings on the fair. Pray, hasten this. And England, if my love thou holds it off, since yet thy cicatrice looks raw and red, thou mayest not yet coldly set our sovereign process, which imports at full by letters from brewing to that effect. The present death of Hamlet! Do it, England! For like the hectic in my blood he rages, then thou must cure me. Till I know tis done, howe'er my haps, my joys will ne'er begin. No. 
needs. Say you this. Tomorrow is a Valentine's Day, a little morning betime. And I am made at your window to be your Valentine. Then up he rose and donned his clothes and dug in the chamber door. Let him the maids that out of me never depart and more. Pretty Ophelia. Indeed! Without an oath, I'll make an end on it. By gifts and buys and charity, a lamp and buy for shame. Young men will do it if they come to it. By cup, they are to blame. Quoth she, before you humbled me, you promised me to wear. He answered, So would I die my younger son, and thou hast not come to my bed. How long hath she been thus? I hope all will be well. We must be patient. just removed, the people muddy, thick, and unwholesome in their thoughts for good Polonius's death. And we have done but greenly and hug and lover to enter him. Poor Ophelia, divided from herself and her fair judgment, without the which we are pictures or mere beasts, lax, and as much contained as all <laughs> Give me my father! What is the cause, Laertes, that thy rebellion looks so giant-like? Let him go, Gertrude. Tell me, Laertes, why thou art thus incensed. Let him go, Gertrude. Speak, man. Where is my father? Oh, death. Not by him! Let him demand his fill. How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with! To hell, allegiance! Bound to the blackest death! Conscience and grace to the profoundest pit! I dare damnation! To this point I stand, that both the worlds I give to negligence. Let come what comes, only I'll be revenged most thoroughly for my father. Who shall stay? My heart. Not all the world. Good Laertes, if you desire to know the certainty of your dear father, is it written your revenge that you will swoop stake both friend and foe, winner and loser? None but his enemies. Will you know them then? To his good friends, thus wide I'll open my arms, and like the kind life rendering help, Repassing with my blood. Why, now you speak like a good child, 
and a true gentleman, that I am guiltless of your father's death, and am most sensibly in grief for it, and shall as level to your judgment appear as day does to your eye. This persuade revenge, it could not move thus. You must sing. A dumb, a dumb. And you call him a dona.
most likely to agree with your brief. Or are you denying the right? Be you content to lend your patience to us, and we will jointly labor with your soul to give it due content. Let this be so. His means of death, his obscure funeral, cry to be heard, as tore from heaven to earth. So you shall. Where the fences. Let the great axe fall. I pray you, go with me. chase. Finding ourselves too slow of sail, we put on a compelled valor, and in the grapple I boarded them. On the instant they got clear of our ship, so I alone became their prisoner. They have dealt with me like thieves of mercy. But they knew what they did. I am to do a good turn for them. Let the king have the letters I have sent, and repair thou to me with as much speed as thou wouldst fly death. I have words to speak in thine ear, which will make thee dumb. Yet are they much too light for the bone of the matter. These good fellows will bring thee where I am. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern hold their course for England. Of them I have much to tell thee. Farewell, and he that knows thine, Hamlet. Come, I will let you deliver these your letters, and do it the speedier that you may direct me to him from whom you brought them. Shall teach you to imagine. 
How now? What news? Letters, my lord, from Hamlet. These to your majesty. This to the queen. Lantern shall hear them. Leave us. I am mighty. You shall know I am set naked on your kingdom. Tomorrow shall I beg leave to see your kingly eyes, when I shall, first asking your pardon, thereunto to recount the occasion of my sudden and more strange return. Hamlet. What should this mean? Are all the rest come back? Or is it some of you to no such thing? Know you the hand? Tis Hamlet's character, naked. And in the postscript here he says, alone. Can you advise me? John Watson, my lord. But let him come. Oh, it warms the very sickness of my heart that I should live and tell him to his teeth. Thus didst thou. If it be so, Laertes, will you be ruled by me? I am. So you will not rule me to a peace. To thine own peace. I will work him to an exploit. Now ripen my device, under the which he shall not choose but fall, and for his death no wind of blame shall breathe, but even his mother shall encharge the practice, and call it accident. I, my lord, but rather if you could devise it so that I might be the order. Laertes, was your father dear to you, or are you like the painting of a sorrow, a face without a heart? Why ask you this? Not that I think you did not love your father, but that I know love is begun by time, and time qualifies the spark and fire. What wouldst thou do to show thyself indeed thy father's son more than in words? To cut his throat in the church. No place indeed should murder sanctuarize. Revenge should have no bounds. But good Laertes, will you do this? Keep close within your chamber. Hamlet return, shall know you are come home. We'll put on those shall praise your excellence and wager on your heads. He being remiss, most generous, and free from all contriving, shall not peruse the foils. Or you shall, with ease, or with a little shuffling, choose a sword unbated, and in a passive practice, requite him for your father. I will do it. And for that purpose, I'll anoint my sword. I bought an ocean of a mountain, so mortal that would dip a knife in it, where it draws blood. No cataplasm is so good, drawn from all symbols that a virtue under the moon can save the thing from death that is but scratch me. I'll scratch touch my point to this contagion, that if I but gall him slightly, it may be death. Let's further think of this, weigh what convenience both of time and means may fit us to our shame. If it should fail, a hat, when in, your when in your motion you are hot and dry, as make your bouts more violent to that end, and then he calls for drink, I'll have prepared him a chalice for the nonce, whereupon but sip him, if he escape your venom stuck. Our purpose may hold there. But say, what noise? One woe doth tread upon another, steal so fast they fall. Your sister drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Oh, where?
my sheet. Oh, and a pit of clay for to be made, for such a guest is meet. I will speak to this fellow. Whose bird is this, Sirrah? Mine, sir. <laughs> oh, and a pit of clay for to be made, for such a guest is meet. Hmm. I think it be thine indeed. For thou liest in it. You lie out on it, sir. Therefore, it is not yours. For my own part, I do not lie in it, yet it is mine. Thou dost lie in it, to be in it, and say it is thine. It is for the quick, though it is for the dead, not the quick. Therefore, thou liest. It is a quick lie, sir. Flow away again from me to you. What man dost thou dig it for? For no man, sir. For what woman, then? For none, neither. <laughs> Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how absolute the neighbors. We must speak by the card, or equivocation will undo us. How long is that a great Faith, of all the days of the year, I came to it that day our last King Hamlet overcame Fort Brass. How long is that since? Cannot you tell that? Any fool can tell that. It was that very day that young Hamlet was born. He that is mad and sent away into England. Hi, Mary. Why was he sent into England? Why? Because he's mad. He shall recover his wits there, or if he do not, tis no great matter. Why? Twill not be seen in him there. There the men are all as mad as he. <laughs> How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Faith, e'en with losing his wits. Upon what ground? Why, here. In Denmark, I have been sexton, man and boy here, thirty years. How long will a man lie in the earth, ere he rot? Faith, if he be not rotten before he die, he'll last you some eight or nine year. A tanner will last you nine. Why ye more than another? Why, sir, his hide is so tanned with his trade that it keeps out water a great while, and your water is a sore decayer of your horse and dead body. Here's a skull now that has lain in the earth some three and twenty years. Ah, whose was it? A whoreson mad fellow's it was. Whose do you think it was? Nay, I know not. Pestilence on him for a mad rogue. He poured a flagon of Rhenish on my head once. This same skull, sir, was, sir, Yorick's skull, the king's jester. This? In that? Let me see. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest and most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now how abhorrent in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how often. Where be your jibes now? Your songs, your gambols, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar? <laughs> Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chap fallen. <laughs> now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her to paint an inch thick. This favor she must come. She make her laugh at that. A 
Prithee, Horatio, tell me one thing. What's that, my lord? Dost thou think Alexander looked this way in the earth? Even so. And smelt so. <coughs> Even so, my lord. To what base uses we may return, Horatio? Why may not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till he find it stopping a bunghole? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that that earth which kept the world in awe should patch a wall to expel the winter's flaw. flesh, may violets spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. What? The fair Ophelia?
Hercules is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may, the cat will mew, and the dog will have his day. I pray thee, good ratio, wait upon him. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We'll put the matter to the present foot. Good Gertrude, set some watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet thereby shall we see. Till then, in patience our preceding be. No, remember it, my lord. Up, up from my cabin. I see God. There was, a, there was a fighting in my heart that would not let me sleep. There's a divinity that shapes our ends. Rough hew them how we will. That, that is most certain. Up from my cabin. My sea gown scarfed about me. In the dark groped I to find out them, had my desire, fingered their packets, and in fine withdrew against my own room, making so bold my fears forgetting manners to unfold their grand commission, wherein I found Horatio, where I found Horatio, a royal knavery, an exact command, larded with many several sorts of terms, importing Denmark's health and England's too, with Oh, such bugs and goblins in my life that, upon the supervise, no leisure baited, no, not to say the grinding of the axe, my head should be struck off. Is it possible? I have it with me. Read it at more, you can read it at more leisure. But will thou hear now how I did proceed? I beseech you. Being thus benetted round with villains, I sat me down. Devised a new commission. Wrote it fair. Will thou know things best than what I wrote? Aye, my lord. An earnest conjuration from the king that, on the view and knowing of these contents, he should those bearers put to sudden death, not striving time to allow. So, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are, are dead. Why, man, they did make love to this they are not near my conscience. Their defeat does by their own insinuation grow. Why, what a king is this? Does it not, think thee, stand me now upon? He that hath killed my king, whored my mother, popped in between the election and my hopes, wrote out his angle for my proper life, and with such cousinage, is it not perfect conscience to quit him with this arm? And is it not to be damned to let this canker of our nature come in further evil? It must be shortly known to him from England what is the issue of the business there. It will be short. The interim's mine, and a man's life's no more than to say it's one. I am very sorry, good Horatio, that too late I forgot myself. For by the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his, and I'll court his favors. But sure, the bravery of his grief did put me in a towering passion. Please, who comes here? Your lordship is right welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you, sir. Nay, good my lord, for my ease and good faith. Sir, here is newly come to court. Laertes, believe me, 
an absolute gentleman, full of most excellent differences, a very soft society, and strong standing. Indeed, were I to speak feelingly of him, he is the very card or calendar of gentry, for you will find it in the, the continent of what part a gentleman would seek. What imports the nomination of this gentleman? The king, sir, hath waited with him six Barbary horses, against the which I take he has pawned six French rapiers and poniards with their signs as girdles, hangers, and so. Three of the carriages are very dear to fancy, very responsive to the hilt, most delicate carriages, and a very liberal conceit. The king, sir, hath wagered, sir, that in a dozen passes between yourself and him, he shall not exceed you three hits. He hath laid it for twelve for nine, and it shall come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. How if I answer no? I mean, my lord, your opposition in your person in trial. Sir, I will walk here in the hall. If it please his majesty, it is the breathing time of day with me. Let the foils be brought, the gentleman willing, and the king hold his purpose. I will win for him, and I can. If not, I will gain nothing but my shame and the audience. Shall I deliver you even so? To this effect, after what flourish your nature will. I commend my duty to your lordship. Yours. Uh, the queen desires that you use some gentle entertainment to Laertes before you fall to play. She well instructs me. You will lose, my lord. I do not think so. Since he went into France, I have been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. But thou wouldst not think how ill all's here about my heart. But it is no matter. Nay, my lord. It is but foolery. But it is such a kind of vain giving as would perhaps trouble a woman. If your mind dislike anything, obey it. I, I will forestall their repair hither and tell you you will tell them that you are not fit. Not a whit! We defy arguing. There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man of aught he leaves knows, what is it to leave betimes? Let's be. Pardon, sir. I have done you wrong, but pardon it as you are a gentleman. This presence knows, and you must needs have heard, how I am punished with a sore distraction. What I have done that might your nature, honor, and exception roughly awake, I here proclaim was madness. Was it Hamlet's wrong, Laertes? Never Hamlet. Who does it then? His madness. If it be so, his madness is poor Hamlet's enemy. Free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot my arrow for the house and hurt my brother. I am satisfied in nature, whose motive in this case should stir me most to my revenge. But in my terms of honor, I stand aloof and will no reconcilement. Though by some elder masters of known honor, I have a voice in president of peace to leave my name until that time, I do accept your offered love like love, and do not spurn it. I embrace it freely, and will this brother's wager frankly play? Give us the foils, come on. 
Come, let me have one. I'll be your foil, Laertes. In my ignorance, your skill shall, like a star in the darkest night, stick fiery off of thee. You mock me, sir. No, by this hand. Give him the foil, young Osmer. Cousin Hamlet, you know the wager? Very well, my lord. Your grace says the odds on the weaker side. I do not. I do not fear. I have seen you both. Uh, but since he is better, we have therefore odds. Mm. This one is too heavy. Let me see another. Ah, this likes me well. These foils of all length. I, my good lord. Set me the two to blind upon that table. If Hamlet give the first or second hit, the king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath. And in the cup of union shall he throw. Richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Give me the cup. Come, begin. And you, the judges, bear a wary eye. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. It is almost against my conscience. Come, for the third, Laertes. Oh, you do my dally. I bring you back from your best violence. I am afeard you may be wanton of me. Thank you so, my lord. Such tremendous in my hand. 
I'm great. And I've met it. It's foul. Practice has turned itself on me. And now I lie. Never to rise again. My mother's voice. The king. The king is in blood. Not a point in venom, too? Then venom to thy what? Sing thee to thy rest. 